All right, boys, let's talk about a conspiracy theory that I believe in. This isn't about the shape of the earth, whether or not we went to the moon, or if the queen actually died last year, but the royal family kept it under wraps to avoid her being forever known as a monarch who reigned for 69 years, although that one has a little bit of weight behind it. This one relates to the true intentions of Dead by Daylight's skill-based matchmaking system. For those of you who don't know, the rank next to your name used to mean something. You'd start at rank 20, and as you played and did relatively well, you'd get pips, and your rank would advance towards rank 1. And in general, your teammates and killers would be around your rank. It wasn't perfect, but it served fairly well. When I started playing Dead by Daylight in 2017, your pips would depend on blood points. I think it was set up so if you got less than 10,000 blood points, you'd lose a pip. And then between 10,000 and 15,000 was a safety pip, meaning you'd neither pip nor depip. 15 to 20k blood points would mean that you get a single pip, and over 20,000 blood points would mean that you'd get a double pip. This later changed to the emblem system that we still see today, just not used for matchmaking, and it rewards well-rounded players for being good at chases, completing or protecting gens, unhooking or hooking survivors, and surviving or killing survivors which adds a little bit more nuance than just blood points, but it's still not really perfect. For example, if you're a killer who can down people in one hit like Oni or Ghostface, you might not double pip because you're not getting in enough chases, you're just ending chases too quickly. But once again, it's not like too bad of a system, I guess. And then, Behavior hit us with the Boogeyman for all multiplayer games. Skill-based matchmaking. This happened in the fall of 2021, which will be important, but we're not going to touch on the date yet. At first, people noticed that it seemed kind of wonky, like teammates of high skill players seemed to be a little bit extra stupid, and the killers seemed a little bit extra baby. It was a weird time, but we didn't know for sure what was going on, and what criteria the skill-based matchmaking took into account, and then it was leaked. This was leaked by a hacker, not like one of the hackers that goes and holds game hostages, but somebody who just like hacked into the matchmaking system. And he determined that there were two criteria used to determine how much somebody's MMR goes up or down during a match. The first thing is the length of the match, which makes sense. If a match ends too quickly, then there probably wasn't too much skill involved on one side or the other. And the second criterion used is how many kills the killer got or whether or not the survivor survived. This kind of drove everybody wild. People were like, well, what about the game where I got 18 flashlight saves, looped the killer for six gens, and then I got camped to death? Or why is it that if I get eight hooks and no kills, I'm considered worse than a Leatherface who gets one hook and then camps them to death? Which, these are valid questions. I mean, the previous matchmaking system based on emblems was a better measure of overall skill. Hell, even the blood point metric used when I started Dead by Daylight, that's probably a better measure of skill. And so this leak was famously confirmed by the devs when in a live stream, Patrick said this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I was playing a game of Survivor and I looped the killer for seven consecutive hours and I unhooked, you know, 18 other survivors and I healed for 93 health states. I fixed 10 generators. It was such an amazing game. I truly am a god amongst mankind when I play Dead by Daylight. But then right at the end, I got thrown on a hook and I died, and I don't like that that counts as a loss. And the idea here is, wouldn't it be nice if you could do all that and sometimes you'd get out alive, right? Like, wouldn't that be nice? That's the idea. That's all MMR is trying to do is it goes, I know that you died. It's ignoring how you got there because there's too much nuance to be able to make a real effective system. So there you have it. You can do frick all the entire game, and if you escape, you're better than the guy who carried the team on his back and sacrificed himself to let you make it out. You're clearly the more skillful person in this scenario, right? The devs claim that this was because there were far too many variables in Dead by Daylight to ever quantify skill in a meaningful way. So instead, with their skill-based matchmaking, they're going to quantify it in an unmeaningful way. <laughs> It's kind of weird to just flat out admit that you failed to do what you set out to do, and so you decided to half-ass it and call it a day. However, because of the absurdity of it all and the refusal to go back on it, I think this is where the conspiracy lies. I have gone through every scenario, analyzed every lead, and I have run the numbers, and I think there is one factor that swayed them into making this a kill-based matchmaking system, and that one factor is face campers. So let's take a look at the facts. Before we had kill-based matchmaking, if you were to hook one person, camp them to death, find a second person, hook them, and camp them to death as well, you would most likely de-pip because you only won two to four chases, you only got two hooks, and you didn't really stop gens from being completed. So with that in mind, where does that put face campers in the matchmaking? With the worst players. Who else shares matchmaking with the worst players? 
brand new people at the game. For a game like Dead by Daylight, or really any game, more players is a good thing, and since DBD is essentially a $20 game with a free-to-play monetization model, since they release $8 DLC every three months, and you have to buy them if you want to keep up with the meta, they probably earn far more from DLC sales and cosmetics than from game sales. If you look at DBD's concurrent player counts on Steam, you'll see that their all-time peak was in the summer of 2021, coinciding with the release of the Resident Evil chapter. The, the first one, not the new one. That month, they hit over 105,000 players on Steam. If you factor in PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and the two guys who play on Google Stadia, then they probably had about a quarter million. This was probably largely due to a ton of new players coming in to see Nemesis, Leon Kennedy, and Jill Valentine. And then the following month, counts dipped almost back to where they were before the Resident Evil chapter even released. So they managed to bring in a whole bunch of new players with the anniversary update, but a very few of them stuck around. Granted, Nemesis, Jill, and Leon released to a crap load of bugs, the new map had to immediately be disabled due to crashing on Nintendo Switches, and it was an all-around botched release. But either way, Behavior had a chance to do a graceful dive into the hearts of new players, and they just flopped. So my theory is that in looking at the reasons why the new players didn't stick around, one of the main concerns was that new players probably got matched with the killers who matchmaking considered bad because they just camped a lot. And then they'd get frustrated and bored and they just they just quit the game. They didn't stick with it for more than a month. So the devs probably thought that implementing this kill-based matchmaking would spare the new players from running into face campers by bumping the face campers up to be in the lobbies with people who play a little bit more faithfully and are just decent at the game. Because those are the people who are more likely to stick around with the sunk cost fallacy, thinking, oh, I've already spent $120 on DLC for this game. I can't quit now. And so by telling the matchmaking system that motorboating the shirtless David on hook until he dies is actually a skillful play from the killer, they just managed to make it so face campers are not considered bad players even though they're not getting points and they're not getting good emblems. I'm sure there are multiple reasons why Behavior implemented such an odd system for their skill based matchmaking and it could very well be true that they just got in over their heads trying to quantify the variables that actually contributed to skill and they decided that they just do it like this because I, I i don't know but hey that's just a theory a game <laughs> i can't do it